Dear friends, today we will discuss a memory interfacing with microprocessor 8085. Let us now see you know, the essentials of uh, memory interfacing. The microprocessor, while it's executing any uh, program, it often needs to uh, read or write from the memory. The memory in case of 8085 is uh, segmented into two. One is the user area, another is the system area. So the system area is protected and it is only used by the system. But in the user area, we can choose any of the locations uh, provided by the system manufacturer where we can write our programs or the codes. The memory which are uh, connected may be uh, volatile or non-volatile depending on the need and usage. Now memory like uh, we have EPROMs, we have EPROMs that, are, that is often known as E square PROM that is electrically erasable uh, programmable read only memory. Then we have uh, RAM, we have ROM and many others can be uh, connected as and when decided by the manufacturer. Now what is the basic concept in memory interfacing? The primary objective of interfacing is to enable the microprocessor to read and write from the memory properly. Now the interfacing circuit uh, must be able to bridge the gap uh, between uh, the microprocessor and the memory and perform the following task. Now what is the task that the interfacing circuit has to perform? The first thing that it should do is it should be able to select the memory chip. Identify the register that needs to be accessed. Now, talking about register, uh, we all know the memory is a collection of uh, registers. So, any particular register, which is a collection of flip flop, is corresponding to a memory address. So, uh, the interfacing circuit should be able to provide a way of identifying the register that needs to be accessed either for writing or from or reading from that particular location. Now, uh, it also enables uh, the appropriate buffer. Now, what is the basic of a memory chip? The memory is a collection of register as we have uh, already, uh, we already know the register is a collection of flip flop and a register actually actually is one of the sections which needs to be accessed where we can write a data or from where we can read a data. Now if it is a RAM or uh, it's a E square PROM or a flash type memory then apart from a read uh, signal it will also have a write control signal. Now to enable the memory chip, uh, there is a terminal called chip select. Now uh, if the chip select is active low type, then we'll have to provide a low signal to this particular terminal to enable the functionalities of this memory. Now this is uh, very much uh, required as there may be many memory chips. Uh, connected to a circuit or to the system and we need to enable or disable the, uh, the required memory module as and when required by the system. Now there are certain input and output buffers in the memory chip for holding and providing an isolation of the internal bus system with the outside world. The data will not be written or read unless we enable the buffers. Now the EPROM will only have a, a read input terminal control signal as the data inside will be pre-written and it is read only and it's only a read type uh, memory. So 
EP ROM that is uh, that is erasable from erasable programmable read only memory this type of a memory can be written only once and read many times and if at all you need to erase the data inside that particular type of a memory you need to provide a ultraviolet lamp to erase the previous data so it is only uh, possible once in the field so in the field where it is not required to erase the data we can only read the data from it so basically there will be a read control instead of a write control the first step in memory interfacing is to connect the required address lines of the cpu address bus to the address lines of the memory chip the rest of the address lines of the CPU will be used to decode and generate the chip select signal which will enable the memory. Then we will require certain control signals like memory read and memory write which will enable the input and the output buffer of the memory so that the data can be read from the memory and a data can be written into the memory let us take an example where we are going to connect an e square prom size 2 kilobyte 2 kilobyte here means it is having 2048 locations each location is having 8 bit data now to address the 2048 locations we will require 11 address lines and we will denote them by a0 to a10 now connect the a0 to a10 of the memory to the address lines of the microprocessor 8085 a11 to a15 will be left out and those address lines will be used to decode and to generate the chip select signal which will enable the memory again we will require the control signals memory read and memory write which can be combined which can be generated using uh, or combining read write and iom bar and use them to enable the appropriate buffers as we can see from the figure here on the right hand side we have the ram it is a 2 kilobyte ram and it is having 11 address lines denoted from a0 to a10 now we all know the microprocessor a085 is having a multiplexed data address bus which is the lower order data address bus now in order to use the address bus and the data bus separately we need to demultiplex it so here we have a demultiplexer and the ale performs the demultiplexing job now from here what we get is a0 to a7 are the eight lower order address bus and from here we get the data bus which is directly connected to the memory now a8 to a10 are directly connected from the CPU 8085 to the memory and the left out pins are A11, A12, A13, A14 and 15 which were then decoded using a logic gate and it generates it generates a chip enable signal which will enable this particular RAM and here we can see we have a uh, control signal generation circuit using bubble NAND gate which uses uh, the input signals from IOM bar read and write and what we get is memory read and memory write let us now see the memory map now from A0 to A10 
are all connected to the microprocessor 8085. So the possible combinations can be all zero to all one. Now from A11 to A15 are connected to the chip select which is decoded using a bubbled NAND gate. So if all the pins or from A15 to A11 are zero, then only the output of the NAND gate as shown in the previous figure will give out a low signal. And when it gives out the low signal, it is getting connected to the chip select of the memory and then the memory gets enabled. So while interfacing a microprocessor with the memory, what we need to do is we need to ensure that when the microprocessor is generating a specific address meant for this particular RAM, it should only enable this RAM and it should not enable any other RAM. It may be connected uh, with it also. So in this particular uh, memory map, we can see that a50 to A11 will remain fixed and only the thing that can be changed is from A10 to A0. So if we consider from A15 to A0, the first memory range starts from 000 to 0000 here means 0 and this means 7 and the rest means F and F. So the memory range of this particular memory starts from quad 0 to 07 FF. Let us try to connect to E square prom. Both the E square prom have the size 2 kilobyte. So each EPROM will have 11 address line and we are uh, denoting them A0 to A10. If the memory range where it has to be connected is not mentioned, then it is as per the wish of the manufacturer uh, to select the memory range of each memory that has to be connected. Now we all know A11 to A15 are left out. Those address line will be used to decode both the chips. And again, we will we will require control signals, memory read and memory write to enable the appropriate buffers. Let's see the next slide where we can actually understand how this is interfaced. From this figure, we can see that uh, there are two RAMs. RAM 1 and RAM 2 both are 2 kilobyte. Now since both are 2 kilobytes the address lines A0 to A10 are connected in parallel fashion and it is directly connected to the address line of the microprocessor from A0 to A10. Now there are uh, address lines which are left out which is A11 to A15 are directly connected to a 3 to 8 line decoder. Now the 3 to 8 line decoder is having three inputs and and few enable enable lines. Now we all know both the RAMs cannot work together. So whenever a microprocessor is generating an address either it will be for this particular RAM or it will be for this particular RAM. So in this particular configuration, if A, B and C are zero, only then O zero output will be low. But this decoder will be active only if A14 is low and A15 is high. Since E0 is active high type and E1 is active low type. So 
A15 and A14 should always be 1 and 0. That is, A15 should be 1 and A14 should be 0 to enable this particular decoder. Now, when the A, B and C input directly connected to A11, 12 and 13 are having 0, it will create an active low uh, signal at O0 and it will enable this RAM and it will disable this RAM because the output of O1 will be 1. And similarly, when this is 0, 0, when this is 0, 0, 1, this output O1 will be high and RAM 2 will be active and RAM 1 will be inactive. Now, if we look uh, into the memory map of uh, when both the memories are connected to the microprocessor, we can understand the memory range in which they have been connected. So, let's see, uh, since both the memory are having 11 address lines, so they are connected in parallel, that is from A10 to A0. And a11 to A15 are left out and these are used for decoding. So, to enable the decoder, that is the 3 line to 8 line decoder, which has been used to enable the RAMs, need A15 as high, A14 as low. Only if we keep this, the decoder 3 to 8 line will be enabled. Now, a13, A12 and A11 are directly connected to C, B and A of the decoder. So, when it is 0, 0, 0, the O0 of the uh, decoder is active low and since it has been connected to the RAM1 or the EPROM1, it gets activated. But the other RAM will not get activated. So, if the microprocessor is generating a address 8000 it will mean that the first ram has been activated and its first location has been accessed now this will remain same till all the combinations are exhausted that means this remains same and the last combination is 87ff which is the last address of the EPROM1. Now, when the A11 changes from 0 to 1, since A11 is connected to A input of the decoder, 3 line to 8 line decoder, the O1 output will now get activated and it will activate or enable the RAM2 and disable the RAM1 automatically. So, the first, if the microprocessor is addressing 8800, which will mean the microprocessor is presently interfaced with the RAM 2 and it, it is addressing the first location of the RAM 2. Similarly, if we keep this one constant and keep on changing the values of this, the last value that is achieved is 8. Triple F, which means the last address of the RAM 2. And hence, in this particular configuration, the RAM 1 has been connected in the memory range 8000 to 87FF, and RAM 2 has been connected in the range 8800 to 8FFF. If we change the decoding strategy, then this RAM and this RAM can be connected in an another memory range. It all depends on the system manufacturer. Let us uh, try and understand a very important situation, uh, which is called partial decoding. Now, uh, we know that we have a EPROM having a two kilobyte uh, memory memory size then it is having actually 11 address lines so we will connect uh, the address lines to the microprocessor 
then the left out address lines which are A11 to A15 are then used to decode the memory chip. In this case, let's see what is partial decoding and what happens when we go for partial decoding in, instead of absolute decoding. Now, in our example, what we will do is we will leave out the address line A15. We will not connect A15 to any of the uh, logic gates. We'll leave it open. Now, let's see what happens in the next slide. In this diagram, we can see that the circuit is almost the same when we first interfaced a uh, single RAM or the EPROM to the microprocessor. Only thing is that we haven't connected A15 to anything. So what happens is A0 to A10 are directly connected to the EPROM or the RAM, but only A11 to A14 are used to decode using a decoder or a decoding circuit which will enable the RAM. Now, the, in order to understand what happens when any one of the address line is left out or many other address lines are left out, which makes it a partial decoding, what happens uh, to the address? Let's see the next diagram and understand what happens to it. In this memory map, which is the memory map for partial decoding, we can see A10 to A0 are connected to the memory directly. Now, and A11 to A14 are also connected to the decoding circuit, which is nothing but a bubbled NAND gate. And so, if all the inputs are zero, only then the output of the NAND gate will be low and it will enable the memory. Fine. Now, we can assume that a15 which is left out open is having a, a zero value that means uh, it can happen that the microprocessor is generating a, a memory address which is 0000 now when it generates the address 0000 it means it is presently communicating with the eprom1 and it is accessing the first location of it now if it generates 07 double f again it is accessing ram 1 and it is accessing the last location of the ram it may also happen that it is 1 since a15 is left open it doesn't matter if it is 0 or 1 so in this situation if this is 1 the address becomes 8 Zero, zero, 0000 that means if the microprocessor is generating 8000 it is accessing the same memory and it is accessing the first location that means of a single physical location is now having two address that means if the microprocessor is addressing quad zero that means zero 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 and if it is addressing eight thousand both the address will mean the same ram and the same physical location so if we do not if we do not decode one terminal of the left out address line what we can see is there are certain duplicate address in this case, two kilo locations are the duplicate address. And in partial decoding, what happens is many of the memory addresses get wasted. Now, why at all we are talking about partial decoding? We talk about partial decoding only when the circuit space is small and it is always may not be possible to introduce hardware for absolute decoding. So many of the address lines are left open and only few are used to decode the memory. In that case, 
we may have multiple address for a single physical memory location. So this is what is called partial decoding. So uh, in this video lecture, we have uh, studied the different steps which are involved in memory interfacing. We have seen an example uh, taking a two kilobyte memory, interfacing steps and the memory range, the memory map. Also, we have seen a multiple memory interfacing and a very clear idea about absolute and partial decoding. Dear friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel iNet Tech Talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.